and so forth. Thank you for listening. I don't know why. I enjoy doing it, and I'm going to keep doing it as long as I enjoy doing it. But then if you enjoy listening, thank you for listening. I'll keep going. And I'll force a little bit more about myself just as a comic book fan in general. Like, for instance, my favorite writer, Alan Moore. The watch kind of easy. He wrote probably the greatest comic of all time, The Watchmen. But he is such a brilliant. He can adapt to any genre. He can do classic sci-fi of interest stories like Tom Strong. He can do uh, true history tales like From Hell about the Jack the Ripper mystery. He can do um, he can do regular superhero comic books like he did the Wildcats for uh, Jim Lee one time, which was brilliant. He he goes all over the place. He takes crazy ideas and makes them brilliant, like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, where he said, I'm going to make a superhero team with Dr. Hyde, the Invisible Man, Mina from Dracula, and it'll be one of the best comic books ever read. And it's so good. The man does this brilliant work. So any any time I see Alan Moore, I go, you know, I know he's going to be interesting. And also the brilliance of Alan Moore, he actually obeys the rules of the genre. He doesn't go crazy like Grant Morrison, who I do enjoy, but sometimes his ideas like, what are you doing, Grant? But more, he plays it inside the box, but he knows which rules to bend and which rules to break. And that's his true level of creativity. Creativity isn't thinking of all crazy things and throwing them on a page. No, that's how we know with Shark Boy and Lava Girl, that horrible Robert Rodriguez movie that literally his five-year-old kid came up with. That's why you don't let five-year-old kids make movies, people. But uh, he knows you have to work inside the box and be creative inside it. That's where creativity is truly shown. And Alan Moore is a genius at that. Favorite artist? John Romita Jr., that man is genius. I had a brief, like I said, I had a brief chance of talking to him one time, and he is a, honestly, I could call him the mix between Jack Kirby and Frank Miller with the gritty nature of it. And I really discovered him when he did the, the Daredevil Year One, which, of course, was the original basis for the first season of the Netflix series that was so brilliant. And they go, wow, this is just gritty and brilliant. And he, he's a true storyteller, which is a key to comic book artists. Comic book artists can be fancy and pretty like the early image guys were, but they ruined the industry with what they did. But if you don't tell a flowing picture from panel to panel where you can feel the action, feel the punches and the flow and the rhythm, it will never work. And Ramita Jr. does it better than anyone. He, his Every character looks brilliant. And he does the best rain. I mean, when you see a rain fall, it looks like rain feeling and so, so forth like that. It's so good. And at one point, he's so prolific, he was drawing Thor and Spider-Man at the same time and still killing it as an artist. Yeah, so he's a great, he's a hard worker and brilliant. And whenever I see a John Romita Jr. on the on the credit, I know, okay, I know the art's going to be good in this. I'm not sure about the story, but the art will always be good. Favorite comic book? Honestly, I'm getting down to where Jeff Smith's bone was so brilliant. There's a classic fantasy story with a twist where it you can, the best way to describe it is imagine if the Looney Tune characters walked in the Lord of the Rings. That's just that brilliant of a story. It's a brilliant it's also self contained. You can buy the trade paperback for the whole run for thirty bucks today. It's one of the best reads I've ever read. I would put Bone up there as one of the best comic books. It's funny, it's heartbroken breaking, it's dramatic. Brilliant all around. And it, yeah, because I always, I've always hedged on my top five, which is also includes The Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, Frank Miller's uh, Dark Knight Returns, Mouse by Art Spiegelman, and also Akira. Brilliant work all around, and those are my top five, all the books. Okay, favorite comic book movie? Ah, I say adaptation would be The Dark Knight, though Spider Man and the Spider Verse is definitely up there. However, as a pure superhero comic book, style movie. I love the the first Incredibles. That was a brilliant film. And also, I, I agree with Alex Ross, RoboCop. That is a superhero movie. Think about it. Guy gets injured, has a great origin story, comes back as a superpower being. That's a superhero movie. And I remember when I was a kid and I saw that poster of RoboCop stepping out of the cop car going, part man, part machine, all cop. And I go, I have to see this, Mom. And it's rated R, so my mom had to take me to see it. So this is another proof of my mom's so cool. She took me to go see RoboCop when I was 10 years old, and I was a little freaked out about it, but she a great mom. She had a talk. She talked to me about the violence stuff afterwards, and she's always been great. She's always encouraged me to the check on new media, but only only under proper supervision. So, yeah. And I worked in a the movie theater one time as the related Dash Con, that me and Eric Jones like to call it, and Adam Weston as well over at Thunder Talk. And uh, we... And, uh, you yeah, know, we do occasionally see parents take their kids to see a rated R movie, but that's the thing. You know, it should be parents' decision to uh, what kind of content their kids sees and so forth. 
And let's see, on the subject of the podcasting, though, well, outside of um, my favorite podcast, outside, of course, my friends, I have to once again point out the Enough of the BS podcast by uh, Tyler and Josh, great upstate sports podcast. There's also uh, the Nerd Bliss podcast, obviously, and there's also Thunder Talk by my friends Adam Weston and Dan Klink. I listen to them on a regular basis. Please check all those out. But the ones outside of that that really got me into it was History Room with Mac Duncan. His history podcast is genius. It's one of the best podcasts out there. You can still listen to it today. He's currently doing a new show called Revolutions about the history of all the political revolutions in the world. And he is now a professional podcaster. He is living the dream. He, that's what he does. He's written a book called Storm Before the Storm about the, uh, the – really up to the collapse of the Roman Republic. And it's, he's, yeah, he's like, yeah, I don't think I'll ever get there. But, hey, he's something to aspire to and so forth like that. And also, I think I'll throw in what are my future plans with this podcast. Well, of course, just keep going. Really enjoy doing it. I like to maybe host a panel at a convention one time to talk about stuff like that. Maybe do a book like Mike Duncan does. We'll see how that goes. I got, I've got, i tried writing. I've got scripts, but we'll see. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I'd love to also interview people in the comic book industry about the history and so forth like that. That will be great to see and stuff. But uh, one step at a time right now, it's going to keep doing what I'm doing. You keep loving I'll keep putting it out there. Well, I like you loving I'll keep putting it out there. I'm doing this for myself mostly. And this is the whole point of this podcast. I wanted to make a podcast I wanted to listen to. And that should always be the advice for anyone that does a creative endeavor. If you want to make a movie, comic book, TV show, anything, make what you love. Make what you wanted to listen to. And guess what? There are a lot more people out there than you think. And you put it out there, they will define you. And so... And so just go with that. And if I ever want to do interviews, well, I would love to, of course, speak with John Romita Jr. and all the other greats. But the dream interviews, sadly, they've all passed away in recent years. But I would love to just have a regular sit down with Stan Lee. Of course, I just have to ask him one question. He'll give me an hour on that one question. It'll be one of the best interviews ever. I would love to smoke cigars with Jack Kirby. That'll be fun. And I would love to play a, go- a round of golf with Charles Schultz. Is it, I would not be betting on that game, though, because Charles Schultz was, a, by all accounts, a scratch golfer. He's golfed his age. And it was hitting home only ones at 72. So, yeah. It'll be, I'll just be, we'll just have some fun. I'll let the, the, the master of peanuts just, just smoke me on the links. And, oh, back to me being a comic collector. Let's see. Uh, I'm a, I actually am kind of serious about it. I currently have 29 lawn boxes, which at 300 comics per box, that's about 8,000 comics over the year. That's crazy. And they vary from all shapes and sizes. Though I've started to purge my collection a bit when I get a trade because it's like, yeah, it's time to go. I'm not, these are comic books. But I always like give them the Goodwill or my local comic book store, and they give me a credit to buy more comic books. So I'm not really getting rid of comic books. I'm just replacing them. But, uh, you know, that, that's a encouraging thing too. If you've got some old comic books, you don't need more. Give them away. Don't throw them away. Give them away. Give them the Goodwill. Give them the kids. Like, spread comic books around as much as you can. And, but uh, I do have a few valuable ones which I keep. And one of them is Amazing Spider-Man number 101. It's my most valuable one. It's the first appearance of Morbius, the, la- the living vampire. And it started around when I – in the 90s. I got into a big Morbius kick. I had a new comic book in the early 90s. But I thought it was awesome. Like, it's a vampire. The comic book character is awesome. It was like a hardcore horror comic. I really enjoyed it. And I actually am looking forward to Jared Leto in the upcoming Morbius movie. Sony uh, with Spider Verse, uh, they show maybe they knew what to do with the Spider Man franchise. We'll see where we go. I mean, I haven't seen Venom yet, but it was a big success. I've heard people say it's not a good movie, but it is a good time. So we'll see. And uh, what also, uh, what with my research, uh, what have been the biggest surprises? Well, I say one of the biggest surprises was the history of Frederick Warburton. You know, the guy who, as a comic book fan, we all hate because of what he did to the comic industry, leading to the Comics Code Authority and that Senate panel and so forth like that. But you realize when you do the research, he was actually an advocate for civil rights. And uh, no one less than Thurgood Marshall cited him for his help with the psychological studies and segregation and helping with the Brown versus Board of Education. So the man did good for the world. So you realize, oh, wait, things are not as – like in real life, things are not as clear cut. There, People have good and people have bad. bad. And Orvin, uh, in the end, actually came seen him more come around the comic books. But he sadly uh, passed away before he could make the full conversion. Maybe we could have brought him over to our side at one point. But oh well. And uh, let's see. Uh, but one character who I've, I've lowered my opinion of is Bob Kane. The more I read about him, the more I go, my goodness. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to say he didn't have a hand in creating Batman. I mean, I'll never go that far. That smacks too much of Stanley and Jack Kirby 
fiasco. And anyone who's studied those comics knows Stan Lee had a very much a hand in making those comic books as well. So let's not go that far. But Bob Kane, what he did to Bill Finger was obscene. He just denied his creative credit, even though the man worked in the comic book for 20 years, and he should have been given the creative credit all this time. He's finally getting from DC. Good on you, DC. And so and so forth. The man, yeah, he he was the writer to Bob Kane as an artist, and you sh- he should never been denied his, his place in comic book history. Thankfully, there's a great documentary on Hulu about Bill Finger and more books and stuff like that. And we're finally recognizing the great work this man does. I mean, he did a lot of great work. He also created the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott and so forth. And he will be a future subject for a, a, a future history of podcasts because the, the work he did, it was pretty significant. And yeah, it's like, uh, but like uh, comparing Bob Kane to Stanley, Stanley never didn't acknowledge his co-creators. He always called out, Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and Bill Everett for their work as artists and pointing out how he, had the, he worked with the best artists in the world. He, they could be great film directors and so, and so forth. Now, he could have done a little more because, you know, he had some pull at Marvel at a certain point. He could have said, hey, you know, uh, give Kirby and Ditko a little more money, man. I mean, they're doing they're making us money, which I've learned that that's what the most uh, creators want. They don't want the. Um, all the money or even most of the money they just want to slice because when they see their movie making billions of dollars worldwide from a character they created, it's like, hey, can I just get a little bit of money so I can like get a new car or pay off my mortgage or put my kids through college? That's all they want. You know, this little acknowledgement and creative credit and a nice little pat on the back. Thank you so much for making us billions. Go buy yourself a new car. They'll, that'll make them, most of them more than happy and so forth. And also, if you ever see Hero, which is a great uh, fundraising where they to, to help uh, fund the past combo creators is great to donate to and well that is the my rambling and well too long history of me i'm sorry i know it's the most boring subject this comic book uh, podcast will ever deliver again but don't you worry next week we'll be back with the conclusion of that history of war comic books genre and uh, until then go out and buy yourself a new comic book And now it is April 4th, uh, 2019. Time for some reviews. First up, favorite comic book of the week. Jim Henson's The Storyteller, si- Sirens, by uh, Barto Sikbor and uh, Jacob Rebelka, which is an excellent adaptation of the classic uh, Jim Henson uh, TV show of the same name. We're telling this time a fairy tale of a fisherman who is thirsting for riches while he's blind to the real stuff that is around him. Great story was Sigmore capturing a great fairy tale story about giving a true parable of a man who can't find out what is really important in life while Rebecca's art manages to somehow capture that beautiful look that that Jim Henson TV show had, reading for a really charming fairy tale story. Great, uh, great read for people that love that classic uh, TV show and, of course, for the upcoming revival. An excellent to pick up. Also, uh, with the upcoming uh, Hellboy uh, reboot movie coming out this month, I went ahead and uh, rewatched all the old uh, Hellboy movies by Guillermo del Toro and also the uh, Tad Stone animated movies. Overall, pretty good. I have to say of all of them, the original Hellboy is the weakest one. I, I think the, the Tad Stone animated ones were the most consistent and a lot of fun. I wish they actually turned into an animated series. At the very least, I wish they had gotten that Lobster Johnson uh, third movie, which never apparently got around to, but still a lot of fun. But Hellboy 2 is a really great movie movie wonderfully made you could tell that Gamero del Toro had really nailed the look and the feel and the action and also the cast was perfect Ron Perlman is a perfect cowboy I'm sorry Jim Harbour I love you in Stranger Things but you have a lot to live up to but he is a good actor so we'll see but uh, overall the Hellboy movies for the most part live a lot to live, live a lot to live up to for this new reboot but we'll see if you haven't checked out those movies yet they're definitely worth checking out they're great great movies comic movies in general and with that, uh, thanks for listening to, well, the uh, most boring topic I'm ever going to broach again. If I make it to 100, I might touch it on it again. We'll see. I apologize in advance then. But until then, uh, next week, we'll be concluding my five-part history of the war comic book genre. And until then, go out and enjoy yourself a good comic book.